Hello folks. So this game is starting to come together now, but one thing that's missing is adding more levels. At the moment it's just this one single level and there's no real way to complete it or move on to another one. So that's what I want to work on just now. But first of all, I'll scroll down to where the level data is and explain how I want to handle the levels in the first place. So if you remember, this is how the world is generated. I've got this massive list of 20 by 20 columns and rows, and all of these have numbers attached to them and they correspond to what's going to be drawn on the map. So you can understand that it would be pretty impractical if I was to try and have this data for each individual level within this code. It's just going to take up a lot of room and it's going to be very messy. What I'm actually doing instead is saving all of this list data within these individual files. So you can see within my platformer folder, I've got level one, two, three, I've got all this data saved in there. And all that is, is just these lists. I'm generating them through this level editor that I, that I made previously. And basically this level editor allows me to play around and add tiles wherever I want. And then when I save it, it just saves that same list. So this is the data that's kind of going on in the background but you don't see it when uh, when I'm using these, these files instead. So to clean things up, I'm gonna get rid of this world data here. I don't wanna use this anymore. This is just for demonstration. So that's gonna go away now. Uh, that of course means that when I try and create my world instance, it's got no data to use. So I need to load something in. So I'm gonna load the level data from one of these files. And there are many different ways of saving and loading data in Python. Uh, I've used uh, a specific module called pickle and pickle just allows me to save these lists as they are into these files and then easily load them back out again so i'll go ahead and i'll import pickle now i'm not going to go through a detailed explanation of how this works because that's a separate video in its own right but for now i'm just going to explain how to use it and it's really quite straightforward if i scroll back down to where i'm generating my world so i've got the section for world equals an instance of the world class using world data. So that means I still need to load this world data in somehow. So that's where this pickle module comes in. So let's just add a comment here and say load in level data and create world. So for loading in, first of all, I'll create a variable called pickle in and this defines the file that I'm targeting. So then I say open and in here I put the path. So the level data, for example, right now we'll just start off with level one underscore data. Uh, then we add a comment and the second argument is to set it up for reading. So read binary and it's just going to process whatever information is in those in those uh, files. So when it's done that, now I can create my world data variable. So I can say world data equals pickle, which is the module I've just imported, dot load. And then we load in this variable here, which is that file that we're targeting. So pickle in. Okay, so if I try and run this now, you see, uh, it's actually loaded a different level because the level I was using in the demo was level seven. So this is loading in level one, but you can see it's working straight away. I'm not having to add in any massive list into here. It's just loading the data that's in there. And if I was to just say, set this to level seven, which is all we've been working on so far, it loads in that level that you're already familiar with. So that's fine. That's working quite well. And you can see it's, it requires very little code. It's pretty easy to set up. However, at the moment, this is manual, so I can't really, I don't want to be going in and changing the string every time I need to change the level. What I can do instead is set a level variable and that adjusts depending on how the player is getting on. So if I go all the way back up to my game variables, I can now add an extra one here. So underneath main menu equals true, I can say level as one. So we'll start on level one, obviously. Uh, and now I can use that level variable when I actually come to load my world. So I scroll back down to where the world data is loaded and in here, what I want to do is replace that string in here with that variable. So I can simply use Python's formatting function here by just putting an F in front of the string and replacing this by curly brackets, oops, just one curly bracket set, and in here put in the level variable. So it's going to take that variable, which is an integer, and it's going to co convert it into a string, add it into this level file name, and load that in. So if I run this again, it'll load level one. So I can just change that level variable as I go through the game and it's gonna keep updating what level it loads. Uh, one thing I wanna add in here though is just some error handling because if it tries to open a level that doesn't exist, for example, let's set this to level eight. Uh, well, that level doesn't exist, so it's gonna throw an error straight away. So let's set this back. And what we wanna do is first of all, check whether that file name exists. And for that, I need an extra module. So from OS import path. And path is just going to allow me to check whether this file actually exists in the first place. So scroll back down again, 
to where we've got this pickle in. And before we actually code that, we just add an if statement. So if path, which is the module I've just loaded, dot exists, and then I can just copy this section here because I'm just checking, first of all, if this file actually exists. So if it does, then we can indent this section and say, if it exists, then use the pickle module to load the data in. So let's run that. And that's it. So it's checking if it exists, first of all, and then it loads it in. OK, so how do I actually get the player to move from one level to another? Well, in the main game that I made, I used these little gates. So when the player gets to the end of the level, he goes through a gate, and then that moves him to the next level. So that's easy enough. I can just add that into my world. And in fact, these level datas, they already have a placeholder for a gate. So if I go back to my level editor and run this, uh, load one of the levels, you can see there's a gate sitting up there. So as soon as I go through that, I go to the next level. So I just need to add that into my level creation, and it's pretty much done exactly the same way as I have with everything else. So I'm going to create, for example, a tile 3, I create an enemy, and a tile 6, I created lava. So I just need to create a new instance, or sorry, a new class for these exits. So I'll come underneath here where I've got my lava class, and because it's going to be so similar, I can just copy this down and basically just change the name. So I'll call this my exit class, and it's still inherits from the sprite class all of this stays the same but this image section just has to change because this is now going to be exit instead of lava uh, the only other thing to consider is this line here where i'm scaling that image so my lava was half the half the height of a tile so i halved it whereas the exit is actually uh, about one and a half times the size of a tile so i just changed this to 1.5 instead oops 1.5 so that creates the class now I just need to make sure that I'm creating instances when I go through the, the uh, level creation stage. But of course, again, because this is a sprite class, it's going to go hand in hand with groups. So I need to make sure that I've created a group for it down here. So let's copy the lava group and just rename this to exit group. And that's it. I now have my exit class, my exit groups. All that's left is to actually create the exit when I'm creating the level up here. And for that, as you already know, I just need to add an extra if check. So I'll come down here. And uh, for this, I can say if tile equals. Uh, now, again, I'm going to have to skip a number because when I created this game originally, seven is re reserved for something else. I believe those are coins that we collect. Uh, and so these levels are already say, set up in that way. So I can't really change the numbering now. So if tile is eight, then we want to create an instance of an exit using the exit class. And then it's the same thing again. X coordinate is going to be the column that I'm at times the tile size. And then the Y coordinate is going to be the row that I'm at times the tile size. Now note, I'm not copying this section here from lava because lava was half of the tile size. So it, it would actually come up further down, whereas this doesn't need to do the same thing. This may sit in the wrong place. I'll just have to uh, run it and see where it's going to land. So now I need to make sure that I'm adding, oops, just need to indent that correctly. And I'm adding this exit instance to my exit group. So exit group dot add exit. Okay, so that should now be everything. If I run this code, uh, no, I've done something wrong here. What have I done? And so, oh yeah, okay. So the error here is saying that it's got a float instead of an integer, and that will be because when I created my exit, I multiplied by one and a half times. That's given me a float, and that's going to throw up an error. So I need to remember to convert this to an integer before I do anything with it. So Pygame has just been updated uh, when I'm recording this video. So before, this would it would throw an error, but it was more of a warning. It would say that uh, floats are still being converted to integer within Pygame, but uh, that's going to be deprecated. So now that it's been updated, that feature is gone. So you have to manually make sure that any floats that you use in this kind of stuff are converted to integers before you finish your code. So there we go. Uh, everything should be in place, but it's not showing up the, uh, the exit just yet. And the reason for that is because I have not shown or I've not added the uh, the draw method of the exit group into my main game loop. So if I come back down here where I'm drawing everything else, I just need to say here as well, exit group dot draw onto the screen and run this code again. And there we go. There's the exit. Uh, only problem is it is sitting a little bit too far down. And that's because it's one and a half times the, width, the height of a tile. So it's kind of taken up half a tile down here. So what I actually need to do is raise it by half a tile. So if I go back up to where I'm creating it, uh, if tile equals eight, the Y coordinate is going to be row count times tile size minus tile size uh, divided by two. And I'll use floor division here to avoid that issue with the floats. 
So I'll try that now. And there we go. It's sitting perfectly there. So that's it set up. Uh, but if I get to it, nothing is going to happen. Uh, the reason for that is because I haven't actually added any collision between it. So I've got collision for my lava, and that's what kills the player, but I don't have any collision for this gate or this exit. So that's easy enough to add in. I'll go back up to my update method within the player class, which is pretty much where I'm handling everything to do with the player. And I'll just add some extra collision. So down here, I've got check collision with enemies, check collision with lava. So underneath that, I just need to do check collision with the exit. So let's just copy down the lava collision because it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. Just change that to exit. And it's gonna be pi game sprite, sprite collide. Uh, the first argument is self, which is the player. Second argument is the exit group. And the third argument is whether or not I delete the item that I collide with. Well, that's false. I don't want to delete anything. Uh, and then I just change game over. But instead of setting to minus one, which means the player has lost, I change it to positive one, which means the player has won. So these are just arbitrary numbers, but it just kind of makes sense. Zero means nothing's really happened. Minus one is you've, the player's died. And one means the player's won. So now that I've got this, I can run the code, but nothing's going to change. The only thing you'll notice, whoops, if I can actually get over this. Oh, wow, I'm really struggling here. The game's going to stop. And the reason it stops is because I have in my game loop, I have everything running as long as game over is zero. So as soon as I've set it to one, everything kind of stops. But I'm not processing what happens when game over is one. So that's what I need to add in just now. So if I go back to my game loop, all the way down here, I have if main menu and then I have if game over equals zero that's when I do my updates if game over equals negative one then I, the player has died so I reset things but I don't have anything for if player uh, if game over is positive one where the player is one and that's what I need to add in now so now within here just underneath where I've got if player has died and game over equals minus one I can add an extra check so this is going to be if player has completed the level and the check here is if game over equals one. Because remember, that's what I set to when the player has actually gone through the gate. So that means he's completed the level, he's moving on to the next one. If that's the case, then I just need to set up the new level. I need to increase the level by one and move on to the next one. So let's say reset game and go to next level. So the first thing is just to increase that level variable. So if it was level one, then level becomes two and so on. But of course, this automatically doesn't actually change anything. My world data was only loaded in before the game loop. It was loaded in in this code up here where I created the instance of it and then that's it. Nothing changes until I call it again. So I need to do that. But another thing I need to check for is to make sure that I've not gone beyond my levels. Right? This game currently has seven levels. If this just keeps going, I get to level eight, it's gonna give me an error because it's gonna try and access a file that doesn't exist. So I need to make sure, first of all, that I haven't gone beyond the amount of levels I actually have. So if level is less than or equal to the number of maximum levels, then we can reset the game. So I'll just put a comment in here, reset game, or sorry, uh, reset level, and I'll put a pass in here. But otherwise, I need to give the player an option to start the game all over again. So restart game, and I'll put a pass in here for now. Okay, so I'll run this just to make sure there's no syntax errors. Okay, everything is fine. And actually, I do have a level zero, which is kind of my test level. So I'm gonna bring that up just to speed things up a little bit. So if I load that level instead, you can see the exit right here, it's easier to access to it. I'm not gonna keep falling into the lava. So we scroll back down uh, into this game loop. So now I can start adding what I actually want to happen when I go through that level update. Well, the first thing is that I want to clear the level data. So the world data that I've got in the moment has been loaded in from the existing level, but now I want to move on to the next one. So I need to clear that list, make sure it's empty before I move on to the next one and start loading in new data. So my world is saved in this world data or this world data list. And that's what's being loaded in whenever I check this level. So I need to make sure that I clear it and reset it with a new empty list. So let's get rid of this pass and just say world data equals square brackets. So this just means you empty whatever is in there and it just becomes a brand new empty list. So now I can load in new data in its place. So I could type all that out in here. I could uh, create my new level and load the data and information in here, but I'd rather set it up as a function that I can call instead. So I'm just gonna create a function further up that I can call and it's gonna be called reset level. So this function is gonna be reset 
underscore level. And what I want to give it as an argument is the new level. So I've just increased the level because I've gone through the gate. So the level goes up by one. I've checked that I haven't exceeded my maximum amount of levels. And then I've emptied the world data. And then I've passed this function called reset level with this new level. So when I come to create this function further up above, it's just going to take this level number and it's going to load in the data and create my new world data. So I need to make sure that when it's finished, it produces a level back for me. So I'll go back to coding this in a second. But what I want to also add is a reset of my game over variable. Because game over has become one because I've gone through that gate. I need to make sure that it's set back to zero. Everything is reset and I've loaded back up with the player back in its original position. So now let's go and create this reset level function. I'll go all the way back up, all the way above all my classes, uh, where I've got my button class. So above all this, I'm going to have my functions. So I'll just add a little comment here to say, uh, I'll say function to reset level. And I'll just define it as reset underscore level. And remember, the argument that it took was the level number. So that's that level variable that's increasing. So the first thing I want to do is move the player back to his starting position because he's just gone over to where the exit is. I need to move him right back to the beginning of the level. And remember, I made this reset function or this uh, reset method within the player class right here. So it means I can just call this again. So I've called it before when I've got my uh, game over negative one condition. So when the player when the player dies, I've got this player reset here. So I can just copy this. It's the same thing, essentially. It's just instead of dying, he's moving on to the next level. So I can copy that and bring it all the way back up to my reset level function, put it in here. So the first thing I do is reset my player back to the start of the game. Then I need to make sure that all of those other groups that I've created, so my blob group, the lava group, the exit group, all of those need to be emptied. Just the same as I've emptied the world data, I need to empty all of those ones as well, because otherwise I'm going to just add more items to them. They don't automatically get emptied by themselves when I move to the next level. So I'll end up keeping all the blobs and all the lava from the previous level, as well as creating the new ones for the current level. And I don't want that. I need to make sure that everything from the previous level is wiped. So I'm just going to go through and empty them. And uh, this is quite easy. I just call the name of the group and then I use pygames empty function. So a blob group dot empty and I say lava group dot empty. I get rid of the lava and then lastly exit group dot empty. So this basically gives me a blank slate. The world map has been cleared, all the items have been destroyed, and the player has been reset back to zero. So now the only thing left is just to go through the process of creating the world map again and reset it with new level. So rather than typing it all out, I can just scroll down to where I've got my world instance being generated down here, and I'm just going to take this code. So I'll take this code, copy it, and I'll bring it back up into this reset level function. So we can put it in here. Paste that in, make sure the indentation is correct. So all of this needs to be indented by one. And now I do the exact same check. So I check if the level first exists. And of course, I've got this level argument being handed in here. So it's going to check that level data exists. It's going to lo load it back in, generate the list from that. And then it's going to call the world class to create an instance of it. So this new world instance now needs to be fed back out of this function. So just to finish it, I can say return world. So it's going to load this new level, it'll put it into the class and create an instance of it, and then finally it will return it back onto my game loop. So I need to make sure that within my game loop where I'm calling this reset level function, I'm actually taking receipt of this new returned world instance. So let's come back down here. And where I've got this if game over equals one condition, I'm calling this function and I just need to say world equals reset level. So this may be a little bit confusing, but essentially what's going on is I'm increasing the level by one. So I'm saying, let's move on to the next one. I'm clearing the world data that currently exists. That's the list. And then I'm passing this function where I'm giving it this new level that I've moved on to. That function deletes everything that has been loaded into memory so far. It empties it and then it creates it all over again. And once it's created it all over again, it creates a new world instance and it returns it, which I then take in this variable. So that was quite a lot of code. Uh, before I go any further, I'm going to run it just to see if it actually works first of all. So I'm on level zero just now. There's my exit. If I go towards it, uh, I do have an error. So what have I done wrong here? Oh yeah, of course. I haven't actually defined my max levels. So this is another variable that I'll be, I'll be comparing against, but I need to define this before I can actually do any checks with it. So let's come back up to my game variables. 
and my max levels equals, well I've got seven levels, so our max levels is seven. So let's try that again. And if I run through this now, there you go. I've just moved straight on to the next level. So it was level zero, now this is level one. And if I try and go farther into this one, I should move on to level two. There we go, and so on and so on. So that bit is now working fine. So now that that's set up, there's only one more thing that I want to make sure that I tidy up. And if I scroll all the way back down to my main game loop, I've got these two checks. Okay, so this first one is if the player has died, and then this first one, uh, the second one is if the player's moved on to the next level. So what I had when he died, there was a restart button that came up, and if you click the restart button, it would reset the game. However, I did it in a, a kind of shorthand way at the time. Because I hadn't, I didn't code all this stuff in, I just did it, or basically I just moved the player back to the start. But this isn't really what I want. What I actually want is to run more or less this same code from here. So actually I'm going to delete this restart here, and instead I'm going to do the same thing as what I'm doing here. So I will clear my world data, and I will create a new instance of it by calling that function. So regardless of whether I moved on to the next level or whether the player has died, I'm going to run through that same reset. It's just in this case, the level has not actually changed, so it reloads the same level. It's not going to be really noticeable, like nothing's really going to happen in this case because nothing else has to be regenerated. But the difference is going to come in when I add more functions. So for example, if you add more coins into the game for the player to collect, when he collects them and then he dies, those coins have already been deleted. So by recreating the level from scratch when he dies, it means that everything is reset exactly as it was when that level started. And then finally, just to finish this off, within the section of when the, when the player has gone through the exit, I'm checking if the level is less than max levels, meaning that there's one more level to move on to, I continue the game. But what happens if I've reached the end of the levels? What happens if I'm on level 7 and I've just completed that one? Well, that means that the game is over. I've completed it and I finished, so there's no more levels to keep going on to. So at the moment, this is just going to hang. It's not going to do anything because there's nowhere else to go. So what I want to do is give the player a restart option. So remember, I had that restart button from uh, from previously when the player was going through and, and dying, essentially, which is right here. So I can add the same thing into when the game is over as well. So I can replace this section with if restart underscore button dot draw. So remember, it's the same restart button. It's going to be drawn in the same place, but it's just there for a different reason. Then I pretty much just run through all the same code again. But first of all, what I want to do is say, well, the player has restarted the entire game. He's completed the game, and I want to start again. So that means the level needs to be set to 1 again. He's starting right from the beginning. And then I do all this stuff again. So I reset the level. I empty my world data, because now we're moving back onto level 1 from level 7 that he just completed. So I create a new world, and I set game over back to 0. So this isn't going to be noticeable right now, but when we finish all the levels, add the level 7 into it, when you complete it, it gives the option to start the whole game over from scratch. So I'm just going to run to make sure there's no errors, and it's all fine. So that's pretty much it for this video. I've added quite a bit there, added in this functionality for uh, moving on to next levels, but on top of that, adding in the fact that the levels are, are stored in a much more uh, efficient way, and I'm not having to manually type in all this data for them, I'm just storing it in these files. So if you found this useful, then please do leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.